Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 3 to 24. Verse 23 to 24, pardon me. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in these, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. In these things I delight, saith the Lord. I am speaking very, very quickly on the subject, knowing and understanding the character of God. No, to understand the character of God. Understanding the character of God. Knowing and understanding the character of God. And second, of the knowledge and understanding of God. It is very, very clear that knowledge and understanding is the basis or they are the basis of all relationships. You know a person, you understand the person, then it defines a relationship. The deeper your knowledge, the deeper your understanding of a person, the stronger your relationship. The relationship between a man and wife is strong because they know each other probably more than any other person know them. The relationship between two families will be strong to the extent, what do we understand about God? Knowing you is all I want to do. Knowing you is all I want to do. Knowing you is what my heart desires. Knowing you is what I want to do. Knowing you, knowing you is what I want to do. Knowing you is what my heart desires. Knowing you is what I want to do. Knowing you is what my heart desire I want to do. What my heart One, God is a good God. That was one of the most popular statements of Ora Roberts in the heydays of healing revival. God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. 
God is absolutely good and the devil is absolutely bad. Good God. Deuteronomy chapter 73 verse 1. Psalm 73 verse 1. It says, truly God to search as are of a clean heart. God that are of a clean heart. God is good. Truly God is good. I know thoughts of good and not of evil. Jeremiah 29, 11. To give you an expected end. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord God is sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God is a good God. His thoughts are good. His plans are good. His mind is good. He doesn't wish you or wish the devil wants to paint him evil and to make you feel like God is behind your problem or the problem of the world. No, God is good. He's a good God. His plans are good. His intentions are good. If it is good, it is God. If it is evil, it is the devil. Is it good? Is God. Is it evil? Is the devil. Is there joy? Is God. Is there pain? Satan. God is a good God. Second, faithful means reliable. Faithful means dependable. Faithful means he can be counted upon. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. He said, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God. The faithful God. Which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. The faithful God. The faithful God, he keeps covenant. He keeps his commandments. He's the faithful God. The faithful God. First Corinthians chapter 1 and in verse 9. God is faithful. By whom you were called. Unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ. Our Lord. God is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is reliable. He is dependable. He is truthful. He is trustworthy. He is the God of truth. He won't lie. He won't reverse. He won't say one thing to mean another. His faithfulness means that he is predictable. We know what to expect of him today if we saw what he did yesterday. We know what to expect of him tomorrow if we know what he, he, do, he did today. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I'm the immutable, unchanging God. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. Faithful, unchanging, reliable, dependable, trustworthy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 13, he said, No temptation has taken you except that which is common to man, but God is faithful. He is reliable. He is dependable. He won't allow you to be tempted above what you are able but will with the temptations also make a way to escape that he may be able to bear it. He is faithful. Tell every devil in hell that God is faithful. Tell every witch and every wizard 
that God is faithful. Tell every negative prognosticator or forecaster that God is faithful. Thirdly, God is merciful. He is good. He is faithful. He is merciful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. No temptation has taken you in life but such as is common to all mankind but God is too faithful to our Merciful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy, mercy, mercy. Deuteronomy chapter 4 Verse 31, he's a merciful God. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swear unto them. He is a merciful God. Second Chronicles chapter 30 verse 9, he's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. For if you turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they shall not come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. He will not turn away his face from you if you return unto him. He's a merciful God, not a wicked God. Psalm 116 verse 5. Merciful God. Merciful God, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful, merciful, merciful. Joel chapter 2 and in verse 13. Joel 2 and in verse 13. Yes, God, and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And repented him of the evil. Great kindness. It's not, it's not a wicked God. It's a mercy. You, you can appeal to his mercy. When you have rent your heart and you erred and you, you can appeal to his mercy and his mercy can triumph over judgment. It's a merciful God. His mercy can preserve our generation now. Mercy. It's a merciful God. Fourth, God is a righteous God. He will do right. He will do what is right. He's a righteous God. He does the right things. Psalm 116 verse 5 where we just read. Mentioned that he is gracious and righteous. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. He's a righteous God. He's a righteous God. Ezra chapter 9 verse 15. Ezra chapter 9 verse 15. Scriptures also said, O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous. You are righteous. For we remain yet to escape as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses, for we cannot stand before thee because of this now. But he is righteous. Daniel chapter 9 verse 14, when Daniel was praying concerning the sins of his people, he said, therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous. All his works, which in all his works, which he doeth, he is righteous. He does the right things. No wonder Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 said, 
that God is not unrighteous. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which means God is righteous. God is not unrighteous. God is righteous. Job chapter 34 and in verse 10 to verse 11 he said therefore hearken unto me ye men of understanding far it be from God that he should do wickedness and from the almighty that he should commit iniquity far it be for the work of a man shall he render unto him and cause every man to find according to his way God will not do wickedness. He will not pervert justice. He will not pervert judgment. He will do what is right. In the situation we find ourselves in the world now, God will confirm that he is a good God. He will confirm his, that he is a faithful God. He will confirm that he is a merciful God. He will confirm that he is a righteous God he will do what is right so first God is a good God two God is a faithful God three God is a merciful God and four God is a righteous God God is a righteous God number five God is a wise God Romans chapter 16 verse 27. We are not serving a dumb God. He said to God only wise. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. To God only wise. To God only wise. To God only wise. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Reiterates Father, now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The only wise God. He's a wise God. Jude, Jude verse 25. Jude, verse 25. He said, To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory. And majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. Amen. God is wise. What is the meaning? He is not confused. He is not, he is never at a junction wondering what to do. Even when Jesus was overwhelmed with the crowd in John chapter 6, in verse 6, he said, Himself knew what to do. In the situation we are in the world now, Jehovah knows what to do. Jesus is everywhere. Jesus, he really cares. No matter what you're going through, He'll fix it just for you, for he knows just what to do. Jesus is everywhere. What you're going through, he'll fix it all for you. For he knows just what to do. God is a wise God, never confused. Where we are in the world now, he knows what to do. 
and he will do it. Number six, God is a mighty God. In fact, it's better to qualify it as God is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. He is the God of might. He is called the almighty because he gives people might in measures. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 and in verse 17, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17, he said, for the Lord your God is a God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not Persons, not take that reward. A mighty God. Mighty God. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 32. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 32. Now therefore our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God. He is our God. He is the great God. He is the mighty God. He is the terrible God. He is the great God. He is the mighty God. He is the terrible God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. In Job chapter 36 and in verse 5, Job 36 and in verse 5, he said, Behold, God is mighty. He is mighty and despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. Psalm 50 and in verse 1 reveals to us the God of might, the mighty God. Even the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. The mighty God, even the Lord has spoken and called the earth. He is the mighty God. Meaning, he's not a weak God. He's not lacking in power. He's not lacking in strength. He knows what to do. And he has the power to get it done. One move of God can move away every devil from the face of the earth in one sweep. So we are dealing with a powerful God. A mighty God. An authoritative God. A God of force. Finally, God is a God of judgment. Obviously, there are many other things about God that we can't cover today. Nobody can by understanding search out God according to scripture. We are just looking at some of the few and basic things we must know about God. He is a God of judgment. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. It's a God of judgment. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. He's a God of judgment. For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. He is a God of judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. He said, And as it is appointed to men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Judgment. What does it mean? It means that those who do not follow his principles become candidates of his judgment. Even in the world we are in now, in the situation we find ourselves now, the judgment of God and the justice of God is still available. For anyone who deserves judgment and justice, for example, if there are human beings that are responsible for the evil on the earth today, they can't escape judgment. Can't. If the virus, for example, was a creation of man or a system, they can't escape it. They can't. So, who is God? It's a good God. Faithful God. Merciful God. 
Righteous God. Wise God. Mighty God. The God of judgment. What is the impact of knowing God and understanding who he is? Number one, the knowledge. What is the impact of the knowledge and understanding of God, of the character of God? Number one, it bets faith. The knowledge and understanding of the character of God, number one, bets faith. Bets faith for the impossible. It gives birth to faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe or know and understand that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It is very easy to believe somebody you know and somebody you understand. It is not difficult. It bets faith. For the impossible. Second, it bets glory and authority in existence. Glory and confidence in, in existence. He said, let him that glory, glory it in this, that he knoweth me, that he understandeth me. That is, if you want to boast, if you know me, you can boast. It bets glory and confidence in existence. We read that already in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. That is, you are confident in existence. You walk with your shoulders out, chest out, because you know a God who is at your back, who is a God of power, who does not lose control. Thirdly, when you know God and understand Him, it bets strength for exploit, exploits. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. The people, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The knowledge of God, the understanding of God, it ruggedizes you, it, it strengthens you, it, it energizes your life to do the undoable, to think the unthinkable, to dare the undareable. Number four, it bets spiritual refreshings. Spiritual refreshings from above. It brings spiritual refreshings from above. Hosea chapter 6, verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come to us as the rain. As the latter and the former rain unto the earth. He shall come to us as the rain. It gives birth to spiritual refreshing. You don't live a dry life if you know God. You don't live a dry life if you understand God. Spiritual refreshing from above. Finally, it bets power for the supernatural. That I may know him and the power. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. To know him is to know power. To know him is to know power. Beloved brothers and sisters, go ahead. 
and know God in all the dimensions we mentioned tonight and even in other dimensions and we trust him that it is going to be a good day faith for the impossible glory and confidence in existence strength for exploits refreshings from above power for the supernatural these are tied to the knowledge and understanding of God you be on your feet and lift up your hands and voice everywhere you are and appreciate the king of kings for tonight